Hello everybody, welcome again to my channel. My name is Emilio Suarez and today we're going to be talking about acts. What are acts? How do they work and how we can use them to make a better story, write a better story. Um, usually we think that in every story there are only three acts, act one, act two, act three, the beginning, the middle and the end. And yeah, that's, that's very, very true. And we can use that and you can write, anybody can write great stories knowing only this. But if we know a little bit more, uh, sometimes when we found some, some problems, we can use that in our benefit. Because sometimes we see acts like a place where you put things. For example, act one, one we usually use it to present the protagonist and the problems that are going to be in the story. Act two is where all the action happens. And act three is where the climax is, the resolution, the, 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 the ending of the story. And yes, we can work with that. I have worked with that for a lot of years and it have worked. But understanding what it is have helped me when I write a, a feature film, you know, not, not a short film like I'm used to, but a feature of a uh, length film. And this is why an act is, it has kind of the same structure as a scene or, or a sequence, okay? A scene is a very contained little problem that's connected to the main source of the story. Let's say, for example, that our story is about an asteroid that's coming to Earth, okay? In this scene, specific scene, our protagonist has to enter a, a lab in the government just to talk about a hypothesis, okay? So how to stop the asteroid. So our protagonist has to go inside that lab. lab. That's the main purpose of that scene, but it has guards, security, uh, the protagonist may have a friend, but that friend's telling the protagonist, I can let you in, uh, you don't have access, uh, nobody wants you there because they think you're crazy, whatever the reason is, okay? So that scene is gonna have a major reversal, for better or worse. Maybe the protagonist can enter, or maybe the protagonist is just gonna infiltrate in some way or maybe the protagonist can't enter but it's gonna take the protagonist to another place that can be maybe a little bit closer to what uh, the main problem is or what the protagonist needs okay it's like a little step so you can see here there's conflict okay it's gonna go good or it's gonna go bad that's what's going to happen that's a scene in a very uh, generic, uh, explained way possible. A sequence is a series of scenes that has the same impact but a little bit more bigger because a sequence can have from maybe three to five scenes in it and has the same theme. An example with uh, using this um, story about an asteroid that's coming to Earth maybe not, not only needs to go inside of the lab, it needs to find a security key to enter, plus finding somebody else in another scene. Everything has the, the same theme at all. And it's gonna end with a scene with a little bit more strong climax. Like maybe enter into the lab at last, but it finds out maybe when the preview when the protagonist enters the lab is gonna find out that nobody's doing anything and that's a major reversal okay and starts doubting about himself or herself like did i dream that because i know i can be a little bit crazy or people say i'm crazy but i'm not crazy and that goes on and on uh to a story so it still have a major reversal that is gonna be bigger than the reversal 
on a, uh, on a scene. Now, an act, of course, you already know what I'm going to say about an act. It's a bigger reversal. It's a bigger change in the story. It's a series of sequences that's gonna end up with something extremely hard. So, let's talk a little bit about how, how long each act can be. Um, let's say you're writing a two-hour movie and if we follow this kind of thing that people talk about that every page equals a minute of movie which is not necessarily true all the time I can make a video about that later on if you want to but let's say just for this example okay that is a hundred and twenty pages for two hours so what we usually do is take 30 pages for the first act, 30 pages for the last act, and 60 pages for the second act. The second act is always going to be the longest act, and it's where more people have trouble because usually we don't know what to do, what to add to complete all those pages. It's kind of easier to present people, to present our characters, to present what's the problem in the first act. And sometimes, if we're lucky, we know or we kind of know what the climax is going to be or what the end is going to be. So you know how you're going to be ending your story. But in the middle, we start putting things just to fill up those pages. And that's where everything goes wrong. Now, that's where all the trouble start because we start adding scenes that doesn't do anything to our story or maybe you're we just want to fill out all those pages maybe you didn't write an outline and you don't know how it's going and maybe you have that outline but still difficult let's look for example the movie called the movie Toy Story let's say Toy Story have three acts okay Act one, it's when we um, meet Woody and all the other buddies, toys. The inciting incident comes in. We can make a video about inciting incident later if you want to. Uh, Buzz Lightyear enters the room and start having some troubles with Woody and all of that until Woody kicks him out of the house and they go inside of the car and they are left behind in a gas station okay that's the end of act one why because it's something extremely different from when the story began and the story was about this toy trying to fight with another toy about who's gonna be the favorite uh, and his favorite and now they're both outside pretty far away because they're not even around the house they're far away left behind and who knows what can happen with them so that's a major reversal okay the story have shift it has a have changed a little bit so we have all that second act that it's them try to return to their back to their home in the ending of the second act of course I'm, gonna, I'm doing this because i'm gonna give you another thing about that big second act it's when they escape the house the house of the neighbor kid who destroys all the toys and they're trying to get to andy's car before they're just moving out because they're moving out of the house so they have to go back to andy the second act is only about how to return home yes still the same main purpose of the story they're outside they have to return before Andy and Andy's mom moved away now that second act it's divided into two acts how do I know that or how can I explain that to you well when they are in the gas station they see a car uh, that it's from the uh, pizza place that Andy and Andy's mom are going so they say we go inside we can go and uh, there 
and we can find in this car and we we'll go in and we are safe they go over there okay they enter the place they enter the little alien thingy with a claw what happens there everything changes they were so close so close and everything changes because the neighbor kid the one who destroyed toys got them and bring them to uh, his house and now they're inside and everything changes again again now it's not about trying to to find a way to return to the home it's how it's that already but now it's about surviving they don't want to die you don't need to tell people uh, my my story has four acts five acts six seven acts you can put as many acts as you want as you want if it helps you with the story everything that you do in a story you can do it but you have to ask yourself does this helps my story if that that you're trying to do helps your story to create a better much rich story or complex story then do it okay but you have to understand the mechanics of the story so you can bend them a little bit and create a better story because the majority of the audience doesn't know how many acts are there there are four five six seven and you can put seven acts and everybody thinks uh, general public that those are only three acts you don't even have to call them like that nobody's gonna ask you that doesn't matter doesn't matter what what's important is that you understand what you can do with an act and how it can help you with your story it helps a lot imagine yourself that you're writing the story of the Toy Story screenplay and you don't use this aspect to write another act and they're just trying to get inside of the car for I don't know how long is that act but imagine that just going car from car to car from another car they have a lot of conversations about how they feel about each other that could be great but it's much more better if we can see that those changes they take us another way that's why we start saying how do we get here and it's much more interesting so use that to your benefit use acts to help you develop a much more cohesive story toy story is about toys that are trying to survive something and get back to andy's um, home or be near andy and that's great but it's also about toys that are trying to understand that they and that they are toys and for Woody it's about his it doesn't matter if he's the favorite or not every toy is important because the important things in life is not about what place every toy should have it's about making Andy happy making his kid happy and he learned that the hard way at the end of the act of uh, the second act so there's a climax there he kind of uh, grows up it's like he died and come back to life a new Woody with a new understanding of everything and it helps a lot with the story and most of the Pixar movies are very 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 um, strict with structure so it can be very easier for you to find all those things that I'm teaching you here so it can be much more easier for you to look for all those things that I'm teaching you uh, in these videos they still tell great stories so now you have another understanding on how to get better with your with your screenplays I hope you have uh, find this video very informative if you have any questions about anything that has to deal with screenplay, with the writing part, let me know and I will create more videos for you. If you haven't subscribed yet, uh, please do so I can, so I can keep on uh, making these videos. Like, share, whatever you need to do. And I'll see you then 
in another video about screenwriting. Gracias, YouTube.